Welcome to the Kunstmuseum Basel. I am Anita Haldemann. I'm the head of the Department of Prints and Drawings and Deputy Director of the Kunstmuseum Basel. And I have the pleasure to show you this exhibition, this very exceptional exhibition, while we're still uh, installing during the last day before the opening. The exhibition Louise Bourgeois cross Jenny Holzer is a very exceptional project um, that I'm very proud to present you. We invited Jenny Holzer to curate a show on Louise Bourgeois. And um, this is exceptional because Jenny Holzer is an artist curating this exhibition. So you're, um, you will be surprised how, how our second floor galleries look this time. Um, Louise Bourgeois and Jenny Holzer are two two giants of American art, we could say. They're very influential, have been very influential and important for uh, contemporary art. Louise Bourgeois was born in Paris, died in uh, New York at the age of almost 100 in 2010. And Jenny Holzer is 40 years younger and they knew each other. And so this exhibition is also a little bit an homage to the older artist, um, but at the same time, um, this is an exhibition that um, very much focuses on the written word and uh, writing. And that makes so much sense because Jenny Holzer is known for, for a kind of art, a conceptual art that focuses on language, its importance in, in public space. And, um, and for Louise Bourgeois, writing was also uh, at the center and core of her life even and her art. Um, there's a huge archive in New York with lots of writings and diaries, letters. And uh, so that's the starting point for this exhibition. And it plays a role in every gallery. We start here in the first gallery, which is exceptional. Um, or each gallery is exceptional in its own way because Jenny Holzer made kind of installations in each room. So in this first gallery, we have these beautiful shelves with very wonderful and also surprising objects by Bourgeois. And they're juxtaposed with prints from the late 40s. And uh, that already shows you um, that Louise Bourgeois from the beginning really liked to combine writing and drawing, or writing and printing. And um, this is, th these prints were made at a very important point in her life because in 1938 she had gone to New York, left Paris and uh, to um, live in New York with Robert Goldwater and um, her, her three sons. And um, in the 40s she started to find her own identity as an artist um, she shifted from a focus on painting to sculpture, and you can see the sculptural aspect in these prints. Uh, they show kind of abstract architecture, skyscrapers, and then they're juxtaposed with these beautiful objects that show how important material became for, for Louise Bourgeois, that it was the three-dimensional work that was um, the, the, the medium where she was able to really um, practice a, an emotional psychological release that was so important for her. Her art is very much emotionally and, and psychologically charged. She deals with uh, very basic and intense emotions like um, love and sexuality with suicide, with passion and jealousy. Um, so with, with uh, kind of the basic experience also of, uh, of life. And um, when she came to New York, what was important, not only the shift to sculpture, which we see, for instance, in this beautiful object from the later 40s, um, but also a very personal um, character of her work, because this is a portrait of her son, Jean-Louis, um, who was a small boy at this time. And Louise Bourgeois was so impressed by the skyscrapers in New York, and she uh, said that she wanted her boys to become as strong and tall and confident as the skyscrapers in New York. And at the same time, uh, there's already this very close relationship between architecture and the human body that will become even more important uh, during her, her lifetime. Um, so the body, especially the female body, will be at the center of her work as being uh, 
almost like a building, for instance, the mother who, who houses or protects the baby in, in her belly. So that's one aspect of it. So I think we'll go to the second gallery, which is also will be surprising, I, I believe. And again, it's, it's like an installation. Jenny Holzer was able, as, a, as an artist especially, compared to a museum curator, to really install the works the, the way she felt would really help the, like the drawings to have all its, its power and um, effect on the, on the visitors. And I, I think it makes it so... Um, lively um, that you have to look up and see this kind of frieze on top with these beautiful watercolor um, works and then you look down you have earlier drawings and here you have a three-dimensional piece in in the center of the of the gallery and i think that gives you a, a sense of the uh, corporate corporeality of of bourgeois work and how important material was for her this is a piece of wood uh, that she found the way it looks, but then of course sculpted the top like a flower and there's a marble figure um, on top of it. And um, that's a very typical way how she, she combined found objects with, with her own um, creative expression by fusing, fusing the two. Um, the frieze you see on top, uh, these long um, watercolors, they deal with the river, the aspect of water. And uh, rivers were very important for Louise Bourgeois because she grew up next to one near Paris, but also because the river is a metaphor for the life, that, uh, the time that runs, that flows, um, uh, memories that flow, but the future that's ahead. So it's in a way very positive. It's connected to memories of childhood. And at the same time, uh, the river can be something um, menacing. It can be dark and deep. It's the place where um, you know, it has to be with, with depression, for instance. So it's a very rich and, and dense metaphor. And I think that's an aspect that comes through in this exhibition, that um, there are so many layers to, to Louise Bourgeois' work. Um, it, there's a lot of ambivalence and many different aspects to, to grasp when you study her work. So we will go to the third gallery. And here you get a sense of the materials uh, Louise Bourgeois used. I mean, drawing and writing was always very important. But um, very early on in her career, she was very innovative regarding sculpture um, or the notion of sculpture. And she used, uh, started using um, fabrics and tapestry and especially material that was already used. Like here you have fragments of tapestry she used to make a, a tower of cushions in a way and tapestry has to do with childhood again and uh, her parents who had um, um, a studio to, rest, to, to conserve and repair tapestries. Um, so that has to do with, with childhood and memories and of course what she lived through as a child with a very complicated family history and a very also uh, difficult relationship with, with her father. Um, so it's, as you see, very, very sensual um, when she uses these materials. They're also very charged in terms of, of memory and also painful memories. Um, that she had and tried to kind of control by um, making sculptures about them. And at the same time, she kind of replaced paper with um, fabric. She printed on fabric, she, st she stitched and sewed on, on fabric. Um, and again, here you have a, a wonderf wonderful examples of writing on fabric. Uh, 
and uh, especially the, the small, very small piece, the return of the repressed kind of a, a, a motto for, for this gallery, that whatever memories or traumatic experiences you try to um, forget or cover up, they always come back. And Louisa Bourgeois um, was so courageous to always deal with what came up um, and she did not try to repress what bothered her and what uh, still affected her later in her life. And she used, she didn't only use soft materials that you would connect with everyday life, especially fabrics that she used in her, her um, um, everyday life, um, like dresses that she um, had worn herself or family members had worn, but she also uses uh, metal, lead and steel uh, to make plagues. And here I think we have a of course, very obvious relationship also to the work of Jenny Holzer, who is known for her, the statements she um, not only printed on paper, but also had on plaques and benches and LEDs um, in, in public space. We move on to the next gallery that is very dense with a lot of drawings and also textile works and writings. But in the center, I would like to point out this wonderful sculpture. And that, I think, shows very well how innovative um, Louisa Bourgeois was in terms of understanding sculpture in a new way. Um, it's the broom woman. And uh, like the femme maison, the woman and the house, it, it has to do with the role of the woman artist um, who's caught in between uh, expectations um, of her as a woman, a mother, a wife, and an artist, and, and all this uh, the kind of challenge to, to play all these roles at once and stay true to herself. I think for a long time, Louisa Bourgeois was not well known as an artist, and uh, nevertheless, she, she was very consequent in, in um, doing her work and at the same time raising a family and never lost track of, of her own, um, yeah, what she wanted to do uh, as an artist, but ended up thematizing these questions in sculptures like these where the broom, of course, relates to housework and the, the, the home, uh, the family home and address to femininity and the whole fragility of, of, of her as a, woman and an artist. And then, um, of course, here you see all these um, fears and anxieties, but sometimes also affirmations of her own, uh, of her own um, desires and, and wishes. For instance, here on this handkerchief, uh, you have the words, I have been to hell and back, and let me tell you, it was wonderful. So she has these. Um, really strong um, emotions and um, ideas that uh, are expressed in these works, but there's often a really special sense of humor, often black humor that also comes, comes through. Um, we have here wonderful drawings that are like note, notes or, or sketches where she writes down ideas, and that's an interesting aspect of her work, that drawing and writing often mingles and it's, it's very close to each other. It's drawing becomes like a diary and is, is, um, is combined with, with writing. So the two are, are really, really close. And also the aspect of ambivalency that I mentioned, that there are so many layers to Louis Bourgeois' work, often are expressed in these um, uh, notes she writes on sheets like maybe or maybe not. Uh, just a small drawing on blue paper, but uh, these sh really short statements often express so much of her, her, um, her art and what it is about. And of course, um, what is important is not only the, the psychology in general of her, or, of her art, but in 1951, after um, Louisa Bourgeois' father died, with whom, as I said, she had a really complicated relationship, she, she started uh, a psychoanalysis. 
and not only was she in an analysis but read a lot of these um, psychoanalytic texts and as, as she was very uh, well read and, and educa well educated and there are a lot of writings that relate to uh, that aspect that um, was so important for her later work and here on this big piece she writes about these anxieties, uh, she writes, I'm afraid of silence, of the dark, to fall down, of insomnia, of emptiness. So she was very reflective and very much asked herself or, or analyzed her own um, experience and identity, never afraid of facing any uh, the, the most frightful uh, thoughts um, she had. This gallery is very central to the exhibition because we show an installation by Louise Bourgeois called The Destruction of the Father from 1974. And uh, it's not only a key piece in, in Bourgeois' work, whole oeuvre even, um, but it is central because Jenny Holzer developed an augmented reality app for this piece. That means visitor will download an app and they will then scan this drawing of a fillette called a little girl. Of course, a very ambivalent drawing as well. It's not only the portrait of a girl or a female body, but all at the same time, of course, of the male sexual organs. So visitors will scan this drawing and that will release a very unusual and new experience of the destruction of the father, which you see in, in the background. And um, while Jenny Holzer wanted her work not to be part of the exhibition and only be present outside the museum in Basel, it's this augmented reality app that is really um, a piece of art by, by Jenny Holzer to augment and enrich the experience of this installation, um, which, as I said, deals with the destruction of the father. And that's a theme in, in Bourgeois' work that's very um, central. It's based on this difficult relationship with the father and the, the fantasies of revenge of the family at the dinner table, um, eating up the father, destructing him, and um, kind of also fight the fears from, from this dominant father. Uh, so this is one version of, of this theme, it's kind of a yeah, big installation that should allow visitors to kind of understand those intense feelings Bourgeois had vis-a-vis -vis her, her own father. Um, so this is uh, something that's very special for this exhibition because um, this uh, AR app that Jenny Holzer developed with uh, a firm named Holition in, in London is, is very, very innovative and will be a big surprise for everyone. And of course, we have soft sculptures hanging here in the room as well um, that are typical for bourgeois work that um, again have to do with this new idea of, of uh, sculpture and this, um, yeah, this feeling of hanging uh, in the air, of being helpless and uh, also a bit of a victim. It's a very unstable situation, of course, and that's, that's an important part of this kind of, of sculpture. In this gallery, we show a, a long series of works on paper that are very uh, typical for the way Bourgeois combines writing and drawing. It's a very late work when she was already in her early 90s, and I'm always impressed how creative and, and uh, active she was still at this age. And the whole work, which comes from the Centre Pompidou and hasn't been shown in quite a while, is called extreme tension. And uh, the words Bourgeois wrote on the paper first describe her body. She starts with the scalp, the forehead, the ears, and she goes through the whole body, um, down the back, the neck, the shoulder blades, all the way to the solar plexus. And then she enters the body, and you see other shapes uh, coming up on the drawing. Here it's the stomach, 
and the throat. And um, so you, you, you see that it's a view into the body, basically. And um, then she goes on to describe more body parts. And in the end, it's also about pains and cramps. So it's about uh, feeling the body, about bodily processes, and um, also very uncomfortable aspects like um, palpitations and hot flashes. And in the end, extreme tension again. And it seems this whole work is very much about um, bourgeois and aging, of course, and feeling uh, her old body and uh, also this probably also fear of, of dying and the body uh, becoming too weak or maybe the, the memories that she might lose, she's afraid of losing. So it's, it's a very, uh, very intimate work, again, as, as most works, of course, by bourgeois are, but very, very personal. And the very last sheet reads the smell of the hunted animal. And of course, the hunted animal is bourgeois herself. Um, and um, it's a feeling that she never lost, even in old age, that um, yeah, there's all these fears still present and this anxiety that she's thematizing in, in, in her works of art. I'd like to go to the next gallery, which is actually still very much in, in progress. It's the last room we're installing today, uh, but you can still get, get an impression. This gallery is very much about um, the experience she had in the 40s when she came to New York and had to leave uh, her father and family and friends back in Paris. Um, and in New York, of course, um, she missed them so much that she made these sculptures, which are called personnages. And you can see they look like um, representatives of, of, of people, of bodies that are, are missing. And uh, again, if you imagine they were made in the late 40s, that's a very innovative uh, kind of sculpture. Uh, she made. And they're here being combined with drawings that deal with separation. For instance, uh, this beautiful drawing with scissors and kind of different kind of tools that have to do with cutting. And it's, it's also always cutting of the umbilical cord, the separation from the child. That's um, like the, the, the basic and first separation you have as a human being, because of course you're always bound to, to your mother, but at the same time you're cut off at some point. So it's again this ambivalence of, of feelings, of, of uh, union separation that is, is very important um, throughout the, the exhibition and the work of, of Louise Bourgeois. And the next gallery is devoted to writing again. And first, I think what you see when you come in here is this whole wall um, full of writings, facsimiles actually, from the archive of Louisa Bourgeois. And Jenny Holter took a long time to read many, many writings um, in the archive and chose a particular set of them to create this wall. Um, and that, again, relates, of course, to the way Jenny Holzer uh, presented her own writings um, in exhibitions and on, in public space. And it allows you to read a couple of, of sentences, at least, and get a sense of um, how important and um, yeah, fascinating the writings by Bourgeois are. Um, they're here. Um, combined with uh, prints on fabric called the Book of Hours. And it has to do with a long tradition of, um, of books that were made for, for um, people to pray every hour. But now, of course, Bourgeois um, changed it to the course of time, uh, course of her own time. And she deals with, with time and getting old, of course, and yeah, time keep, that keeps going on and can't be, can't be stopped. Um, I, 
and it's on, on the musical paper, that's always something that uh, reappears in her work once, once in a while. So writing remains uh, important also in the next gallery. This is again a, a work of the older artist and um, it's, it's a series that's conceived like double pages from a, from a book she could have made and these um, drawings and the text uh, tell a story about a boy who witnesses his parents fighting and um, he puts together um, the remains of the, of the fight and um, in the end it's about sublimation, a central aspect of bourgeois work because she often described that out of all these bad memories from childhood or the, the conflicts and the pain she observed or experienced herself, she made something beautiful out of. So she created art and in the end she made something beautiful of, of something that was not so um, nice in her, her life. Um, and uh, she often said that art kind of rescued her because art helped her to release her fears and at the same time control them by, by making art, art of them. And here again we have a beautiful juxtaposition with two sculptures, especially this one called um, Gör, hearts, it's about two hearts. Um, they're lit from inside which will be seen better when we dim the lights uh, later on. Um, but it's always beautiful to see how drawings and text in the end are transformed into sculptures as well and um, give another kind of uh, and a three-dimensional expression to what Bourgeois tells us in, in her writings and, and drawings. So now we enter the last gallery, which is really a big and intense finale with almost 200 works in one big gallery. And uh, I think again, you get a sense of the installation Jenny Holzer designed for, for um, this big space. And here it's, you see mainly uh, drawings or watercolors and gouaches from the last decade when Bourgeois was uh, working, uh, when she was in her 90s. And it's very much uh, about the relationship between the mother and her child. It's about breastfeeding. Um, so the breasts um, are very present in red. They're like little landscapes. You have the mother and son relationship, but also you have, uh, again, the tools to cut, um, make the cut and free yourself, um, which can of course also be painful. Um, then you have more abstract uh, sheets as well with spirals and rays. Um, so that's also typical for bourgeois work that she often go goes close to abstraction but then always comes back to the, to the body that's central. Um, we have two sculptures in this gallery that relate beautifully to the color red. Um, the colors were really important uh, for um, bourgeois. Red was of course very central because red is the color of passion, of love, of uh, sexuality of course, but also of blood and pain and um, so a really uh, loaded um, color. And this is one of the cells she started making in the 90s, um, a so-called soft sculpture in the center, also a, um, a grown-up, an adult uh, head with two smaller uh, heads united in, in one body. Um, in this uh, yeah, very, very heavy cell. So it's also again about um, mother and children. Um, so that's, um, I think, something that really um, was important to her at the end of her life. This um, yeah, memories of, of the mother-child relationship, but also about family. There's also a whole beautiful series about the, the woman's body being the protective space for children and then the 
the male figure next to it. Um, so that kind of sums it all up, what was so um, important for her work. And again, here, of course, you don't only have the, the red color, but you have writing. You have the pencil writing um, across these bodies. Um, it says the miracle. It says eternity and pity. Um, but there's, yeah, again, the whole ambivalence of it's not only the unity and harmony of family, but it's attention. Um, and it's the, yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on, let's say, say it like this. Yeah, so this is the last room, and that is the end of the exhibition here on the second floor of the Neubau of the Kunstmuseum. Jenny Holzer went beyond the exhibition to also place bourgeois work in the rest of the Kunstmuseum. For instance, she placed a very unusual work called Tusum, made in 1991, in the passage between the two buildings of the Kunstmuseum. It's a big tank wagon that moves back and forth, kind of two pieces um, merging and uh, coming apart again. And um, that's an ideal work to show in between the two buildings. And it's a sculpture, or even an installation that um, thematizes again this theme of the of you being united, uh, being a twosome, but at the same time wanting to separate and coming back together. So it's not only about um, the relationship between men and women, but also between the mother and, and the child. So this is a really surprising and rarely seen work by bourgeois. Holzer also is uh, curating dialogues in the old building of the Kunstmuseum. Uh, she placed four sculptures in galleries of the first floor um, amidst the old masterworks by Holbein and uh, also works by Cezanne and Hodler. And she starts really interesting dialogues between bourgeois work and the history of art between art by male painters and the sculpture of, of Louise Bourgeois. So you will not only discover Bourgeois work um, in the midst of our collection, but you will start to look at our old master paintings in a new way, I believe. You will also be surprised in the elevators where you will hear the sound of Louise Bourgeois singing or, or reciting. And um, there's a small exhibition in the, on the first floor of the Hauptbau in the graphic cabinets. That's where we are showing drawings and prints from the collection of the Department of Prints and Drawings that Jenny Holzer chose to reproduce in the artist book that she made. It's a very uh, unusual and uh, impressive artist book that Jenny Holzer designed for this exhibition, mainly showing, of course, works by Louise Bourgeois, but in between you will always find um, some drawings and paintings from the Basel collection. Jenny Holzer produced one big work, or rather three, um, by, by developing projections on facades in the city. There's uh, projections on the Kunstmuseum Basel itself in the courtyard and the outer facade, and the city hall, as well as the old university near the Rhine. And for this time, Jenny Holzer chose text by Louise Bourgeois um, to, to project. So she brings um, Louise Bourgeois' very intimate and, and personal thoughts and writings into the public space. And uh, that's a very unusual um, work by, by Jenny Holzer.